Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to build a squirrel feeder. In our home we have a lot of uh, squirrel feeders and bird feeders and bird houses and things. We like to cater to the local wildlife and this is a really fun project to build. It's very easy. It only takes an hour or two and it takes just one single cedar fence picket. So two to three dollars to build it and it's a lot of fun. And I'll show you how we did it. So it's pretty straightforward in order to build this. Uh, what do we do is we lay out all the parts on the picket. You can see my very fancy plans up there in my notebook that I have created. And so we're just gonna measure everything out, lay it out and mark it. And one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and mark uh, everything on here all at once. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a gap. I know my blade's about an eighth of an inch wide. So I'm just moving this uh, pencil line over about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just gonna make sure my saw cuts right between that mark. And I'll go ahead and lay out the next part. But the nice thing about a project like this is it's not really like fine woodworking. Uh, this is something that if you're just close within a sixteenth of an inch, it's gonna come out just fine. Then I'm gonna go back through and I wanna label, uh, put the names on each of these individual parts so I don't forget what they are once I cut them free from this board. This is also a great project that you can get your kids involved in woodworking with you, especially if they're new to woodworking because it's such a fast project. Uh, when kids first start out, they don't have a really long attention span, so they're not gonna be able to enjoy woodworking with you if a project takes days or weeks, but if you can build something in an hour, put some peanuts in it, and feed squirrels with it, they're gonna love it. So once the measuring and layout is all done, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the parts, and you can see there that we're just cutting right between the pencil lines. So this is actually Kyle who's going to be doing all the cutting for this project. If you've seen any of our videos before, you know that Kyle is my daughter Maya's boyfriend. And it was his idea to build this and so we're going to let him do the bulk of the work for this project. If you enjoy our projects, then we'd really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button down below. When you subscribe to our channel, that really helps our channel grow. And I had mentioned, I think, in the very last video that that's something we kind of have neglected to do. The couple of years that we've been on uh, YouTube, we never really asked people to subscribe. Uh, so our channel is growing kind of slow. But uh, there's actually probably over a million people that have watched our videos. And we just, you know, most people are not subscribed. It turns out about 85 or 90 percent of the people are not actually subscribed to our channel who do the watching so if you're one of those guys and, and you kind of like what you see we'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and if you click that notification the bell as well then you get notified for when our future videos come out so here Kyle is actually cutting a groove in one of the sides of the squirrel feeder uh, we're gonna make this into a dado which will hold a little piece of plastic so that we can see whether or not it still has peanuts in it at the end so just two passes over the blade and that's what gives us our, our thickness. You can see we've got one pass, move the fence over just a little bit and make a second pass. And that'll get it to where it's about a quarter of an inch wide. And that's just the width of the piece of plastic that we're gonna get for that. And if this is a project that you'd like to do yourself, we do have a full set of 3D plans available on our website. And I will put a link to that in the description below. So next we're going to cut the plastic. This is a piece of plastic that I had laying around. It's just a quarter inch acrylic. You can get acrylic from any of the big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot uh, or even a local hardware store probably sells it. And it's not very expensive and all you need is one really small piece for this. I think before I had bought a big piece like a 30 by 30 inch piece and I just gradually cut pieces off of it as I need. This is quarter inch thick acrylic which actually comes in at just a little bit under a quarter so it fits very nicely in that groove. It also comes with a thin plastic protective coating that will peel off later. Now this piece that I'm cutting is just a thin strip. This is gonna be for the lifting mechanism. There's a little platform in front and when the squirrel steps on the platform, this mechanism will lift up the lid so that he can reach in and access the peanuts. And then when he's not accessing the peanuts, the lid will close back down and keep the rain off of them. Plus it's really cool to see the squirrel open it up to get the peanuts. 
Acrylic cuts and drills just fine. What I found out is that you just need to move it a little bit slower. So if you're drilling a hole, drill through it a tiny bit slower than you would if it were wood. And if you're cutting it, cut a little slower, push a little bit slower through the table saw, and it cuts just fine. Now I'm going to take that lid piece and I'm going to cut the lid at that slight angle that the front of the box is at in order to help the rain shut off of it, but so that I can also get a tight fit between the lid and the back. And this is one of the box sides. This has to have a notch in it in order to allow the bolt to come out and move that lifting mechanism up and down. I use a Forstner bit to cut a nice big flat round hole. A spade bit would work just as well. And then I use the bandsaw to cut the straight portions and here just a handsaw would work fine or a jigsaw, whatever you have handy. Then to open that lid I have a piece of piano hinge. I got a piece that was a foot long and I think we only need about four or five inches here. And so we're just going to cut this with the grinder. You can also cut it with a hacksaw. And also you can buy shorter sections, but this is just what I found. I am using stainless steel piano hinge. That way it can stay outside forever and it will never rust. If you're going to use something else, you might want to put a lacquer finish on it. And then I've got a series of holes to drill in various locations. Those are marked on the plans, and you'll kind of see what each of those are for when we get to the building stage. You can see I have a little flag of tape that's showing me how deep I want to put each hole. All right, time to build the whole thing. Now we're ready for assembly. So if you have a couple of hands here, this makes it easier. I'm going to use a pin nailer to start with. The pin nailer is a headless nail, just very small like a pin. And it's very easy to tack projects together with this, although it's not really strong enough to hold it for the long term. So I'm just going to tack it together with pin nails. And then I'm going to follow up with screws everywhere. One alternative would be you could use glue. I could use glue on each of these joints and then I could put pin nails in as well that would hold it securely until the glue dries. But I have found that screws in this case, especially if it's outdoor, uh, tend to hold up a little bit better than glue in the long run. And so that's why I went with screws instead. And you can see I've put a dotted line there and that shows me where the center of that bottom piece of the feeder is. That's where I know uh, where to put my nails in. And next up is the lid. And you can see why we cut that bevel there. It gives a little bit better fit into the back of the bird feeder. And then I've cut it wider than the box of the bird feeder. I'm just going to center it so that it overhangs a little bit on each side to help keep the rain off of it. You don't need to measure, just eyeball that. And we'll center the hinge as well. And I'm holding it down and Kyle's going to go ahead and install the hinge with some stainless steel screws. Now we can finally take the plastic layer off of the acrylic. And the acrylic's nice and clean. I don't generally bother cleaning up or uh, sanding the edges because they're gonna be hidden down in those dados. And that's what the box looks like. Now this piece here is going to be the lever which allows the lid mechanism uh, to go up and down. And I've got screws that I've pre-drilled into that lever and those correspond with holes that I have set in the sides. And I don't want to bury those screws. I want those screws out just a little bit because these screws are actually going to act as our pivot points. So if I were to bury the screw in there deeply, then this board wouldn't spin very freely. But I, I do want it to go up and down fairly loosely. I have also used a ceramic coated deck screw. This is a screw that will never rust or corrode outdoors. And these screws are made by Deckmate. These are actually the screws I use for almost all of my woodworking projects.
Okay, now for the the lid mechanism. And another deck screw here, a little bit longer one. And I have a small piece of thin plastic tube that is kind of helping keep me, keep that uh, screw head offset from the back. And anything there works, just something sort of like a straw, but a little bit more stout. And then we'll go ahead and put this into the lid as well and leave that loose. And there you have it. You can see how that works. When the squirrel stands there, it lifts the lid. All right, now it's time to follow up throughout the whole box with deck screws. I used inch and five eighths deck screws for the remainder of the box. And I'm actually just making sure I get a couple in each board or each joint all the way around. And I'm using a countersink bit uh, for everything. So in this case, I can go ahead and bury the screw head flat so they don't have to stick out. And this is going to make this, this little box practically indestructible. It'll last forever after this. I've built these and they've lasted 25 years outdoors, no problem. Now I'm just going to chop the top corners off here, just to add a little bit of decoration to the box to make it a little bit nicer looking. In fact, if I had planned better, I could have used the top part of the dog-eared cedar picket uh, first and used that for the back, and that would have worked perfectly for me. Now I'm going to put a hole in it so that I can screw it or mount it to the tree. And that's basically it. I'm going to clean the dust off of that so he can see it a little bit better. And there it is. It's all done. That's exactly how it works. So here it is with some peanuts in it. You can get an up close look of the mechanism. That's why there's the slot in the side of the bottom box to allow that part to slide up and down in there. And I've got a little uh, piece of plastic tube or a little piece of plastic pipe about an inch long in there to keep that screw offset from the back. And you can see that allows the screw to mount into the, uh, the pivoting part of the base where the squirrel stands. And we press down on the front part of the platform that causes the lift mechanism to raise the lid. And it takes very little force to hold that down. So in our yard we put these right around ground level and that way we can easily access them to refill them. We just screw them into the tree so they don't uh, topple over or get carted off and that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you very much for watching.